1913 had a flood from the river and that was the height it had reached here. This building is its original location. Hello. Introduce yourself, tell us what you're doing. My name is Lee and I have brought some textile arts into the building, doing some historical work with fiber. Um, and right now what I'm going to do is a little bit of spinning on the wheel. All right. Um, how much background do you want? Yeah, whatever you want to provide, <laughs> be great. So human hair is very straight and when you go to pull out an individual one of these fibers, it just slides right out. Um, but at a real small level, these have little scales all over them. So as soon as you twist the fiber together, um, it locks that in place so you can't draft it or pull fibers out anymore. And as you do that, you keep making yarn. All I heard him talk about was hair with my hairline, but yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Your hairline, that's what it's all about. Man. No, it's all it isn't. About. <laughs> I like mine. It's easy. Okay, so I didn't know that about that part. That's yeah. interesting. Something new, I did learn. <laughs> That's why I'm here. Mm. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what I'm really doing is controlling the twist, holding it so it won't, and then letting it go when I've drafted out what I want it to. So I can just Keep drafting and slowly let that twist slide back into what I'm doing. Okay. You gotta get the feel of it or you just break it right off, wouldn't yeah. you? Absolutely. Or it'll tighten up so far into that that you can't oh. with it. And when you get that draft just right, it just comes out real smooth. And This is a, a mix of natural colors from sheep. Okay. Um, which means I get a nice little sort of candy stripe as I go. And yeah, lots of fun. And all this is from what you was telling me earlier, same thing, except they are, what, 20 feet long? 20 feet long yep. strand? And these are, I believe, three ply. Um, so plying is your old foam cord. Um, yep. Where you get so much of a spin in the foam cord that when you let go of it, it all bunches up and it's tangled. But what that really is, is a plied yarn. And so that's the kind of yarn we're used to buying, where it's multiple strands twisted together. But once they twist, they, they go slack. You no longer have that twist because it wraps on itself. 
lots of fun. Okay. So. I remember them days. There's your history lesson. A little bit of spinning. Yeah. And if you go putting this anywhere, um, I am happy to teach people how to spin whenever they come in here and hang out. There you go. Do you have a channel or Instagram or a nope. anything? No. You can so. find me here. <laughs> okay, there you go. At the Heritage Village, Mimesburg, Ohio. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was just down here for opening day or not. So okay, yeah, that's a nice that's a nice deal then, because yeah. normally they they have people that would show up right and they do you know do it for a day or a certain yeah. thing. But okay, that's a big bonus then. So I live just a few blocks away and almost. The loom is theirs, and almost all of the other fiber stuff in this corner I brought. Okay. Well, that's good I'll, to know I'll that you're a, you're an ongoing attraction. Yeah. And because the fibers all join together so nicely, uh, when I get to the end of a bunch, I just fold new fiber over. And let it start getting connected. Nice. Good to go. And all this comes with experience, and you said a 15 plus years or so. Yeah. Nice. Playing with fiber. Well, the cameras keep me entertained, but it, that puts me on the streets because I'm taking the pictures. And uh, I'll give you one good. more fun one. There is a device called a weasel, and it's on a stand. And it's got spokes coming out and a bar going across the top of each one. And when you are fill up a spool on one of these, you want to measure out how much yarn you've actually created. And so you have this device, and it's got a little peg, and you spin it. So you tie the end on, and you start pulling the thread off of the spinning wheel to wrap it on there. But it's got a little worm gear inside that causes a piece to move, and every, I believe, 40 times the wheel spins all the way around, it makes a clack of a piece of wood inside against other wood. Okay. And that tells you how many yards you've wrapped onto it. So you have to listen for the clacks. You have to listen for oh, Okay, got it. Nope. Most of the time, it was the parents listening for that because this was a simple enough chore for the kids to do in the house. Um, and what's really fun about that is how do you get kids to do work around the house? You make it a game. Yeah. And so there was a song that would be sung while kids were playing this. Round and round the mulberry bush, rabbit chase the weasel, Da, 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 and pop goes pop. the weasel. Every 40 times. Nice. See, yeah. look at that. That's yeah. good. Most people know the song. Nobody knows the, the history. The of it. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. It's Even so at mine. Fun. Yeah. I have one and I'll be bringing it in hopefully in the next month or so. Okay. Yeah. What you're saying is a reason to come back. Yep. Okay. Got it. Good <laughs> deal. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Because otherwise you'll start cinching down. Oh, that's right. And then this pulls up past, go in, you bring this down, twist it a little bit if you need help pushing, and that snugs down that line, mm -hmm. go through, pull it, and then we push down past, <coughs> we have our next piece, push that back, we keep on going. So it's a mini version of like the... Yep, and a, a fixed heddle. A lot of the heddles will move up and down. This one is locked in place and oh, takes okay. every other strand that comes across the top instead of going all the way across. So these are loose and these are fixed in place. The big ones, I'd use the foot pedals to change around. What, yeah. yeah. Okay, nice. Kind of fun. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, let's do some exploring inside the Gebhardt Tavern. Set upstairs. Now oh, first, here we go. <laughs>
So that was the Gebhardt Tavern, and it was the oldest building. It is the oldest building that's still in the original spot, so going back to 1811. But they found the Kircher home, which was originally several blocks down the street from here, and it's circa 1809, and we'll be going into that next. Well, 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 look at that. No, I mean the built in now and putting the books up there. It's been a long time since I've been in here. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've had some changes. Do you see anything upstairs? No, I'm going to go up there. We have a dollhouse up there that belonged to a descendant of Jacob Kircher. Oh, okay. Nice. I was very intrigued that I could find a picture of the It's the only thing in the building that belonged to a Kirchhoff. Okay. Except the building. Yes. Now, I don't know if Mr. Treon owned that name at the time, but Mr. Miller cut it, cut the grass. Have you been here before? Yeah. And he was a farmer, so I would just assume that he probably did. Okay. We've made a few changes. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, good talking to you. All right. Take care. Bye. 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 We still do the one room schoolhouse for the kids. It's the only thing in the house that's belonged to a descendant of the here at Chino, except the house itself. Okay.
right, let's walk up to the levee and check out the river.